have the objects physically, but what is an object? An object only gives you a feeling. So why the fuck do I need to have the object to tap into the feeling? I can tap into the feeling at will. And that's what the gods are. The gods are immutable, eternal configurations of a certain feeling. So Oshun is an immutable configuration, at least in her idealistic way, is an immutable configuration of the energy of love. So no matter what the eyes see, it will never convince her otherwise that she is not the highest potential of love, that she is not in love. Baron Samdi, he is the immutable manifestation of inner peace. So no matter what happens around him through his eyes or his breath or what they would in indicate to him, it will never make him feel like he is not in peace. So that what the, that's what the God forms are. They are high emotions you always need to connect to the highest of the highest emotions and that's one of the ways to easily tap into the alchemical process of purifying your breath and releasing your personality from the constraints of the breath because the breath acting as your so-called ego tells you man you ain't got this or man you ain't got that or you can't feel good about yourself until you get this. But when you get the diploma you've been working for for four or five years, you, you, you get a rush. But then you're like, man, all this for this shit? All this for this diploma? Or when you were sweating a girl, man, all this for this girl? Like, or when you thought that a certain amount of money was going to make you happy, what was that? That was the breath going through its master, the alphabet, and cause and effect. So the breath through the alphabet brings you through the process of cause and effect and tells you, you need, uh, you depend on something physical to access an emotion. But once you realize, wait a second, I don't need to have all of this. I don't need to have the physical manifestation of the thing to feel like I have it. I could just visualize it and have the same feeling because ultimately it's about the feeling. It's about the feeling. The objects don't matter. The objects do not matter. It's about sustaining a high emotion because I heard, I heard someone speaking and they claim to be a quote unquote dark side magician in the left hand path magician, but they were saying that if you don't manifest or if you don't have a certain object to validate your magic, then you're not really a magician. And I'm like, but yo, isn't that kind of backwards? The true God is in a high vibration a high frequency, no matter what the circumstances. To be a god, you have to be above the moon. You have to be above the sun, quite frankly. Therefore, you are independent of circumstances. And because you are independent of circumstances, you can manifest, quote-unquote, whatever you want. So you're telling me, as a, quote-unquote, dark side magician, I have to wait for things to happen to get them or to feel like I have accomplished something. Again, that's when niggas trying to put limitations on you. So you're thinking, oh shit, well, if I don't manifest a, an, uh, a, a, a deity from the sky, if I don't see this or if I don't see that, I, uh, my magic is not working or anything. Look, it's all about what you believe in, but your belief is not something you put your mind into it is you extracting your personality your awareness out of the limitations of your breath and realizing you are the dragon watching over gotham city there is nothing that you want 
There is nothing that you need. There is nothing that you can't have. And you're only playing a game to challenge yourself to be able to manifest certain objects. But no circumstances can make you better or worse. That's what a God is. Circumstances cannot enhance you, cannot deplete you. You are constantly nourishing yourself from the highest fountain of the highest emotion of em, not emotions feelings of joy of gratitude of contentment of satisfaction of love now i made a video love respect is greater than love because unfortunately our concept of love is very not only selfish, but very animalistic. It's very animalistic. But there's certainly a frequency that I wouldn't even call love. It is beyond love or how we perceive love. And that's when you actually tap into your own soul. That's when you actually tap into your own. The real word for love is freedom. Freedom from a body. Freedom from thoughts. Freedom from wants. Freedom from needs, freedom from desire. That's what the Sufis call love. That's what the yogis call love. A matter of fact, when you see a yogi in samadhi, which they call mystic absorption, you know what that is? That is a master that has completely disconnected his identity, his self perception from breath. There are many levels to samadhi but to enter the jinn state at will you must purify your breath the easiest way to do that i mentioned but even more key tap into high emotions and don't worry about having the things to prove to you that you deserve those high emotions you don't gotta have your quote-unquote uh, soulmate to tap into the highest emotions of freedom or what we call love. You don't have to have $10 million to tap into the frequency or the, or, or the state of abundance. And that's what makes it godly. That's what makes it elevated. It's because it's not there, but you know it belongs to you. Because when I get a $10,000... Where where do I get the rush from the money? It's an electrical signal in my brain saying, oh shit, I have $10,000. But why can't you connect to that electrical signal without the $10,000? Why can't you connect to the electrical signal that falling in love gives you or joy or gratitude with nothing to quote unquote be grateful for. We have to push the envelope. We have to stop worrying about those physical things and those physical attributes and actually tap into those things internally with a thousand percent conviction, knowing that this shit is mine, this shit belongs to me. Nobody can take that away from me. I don't depend on a God. Stop depending. And the reason we depend on things is because our breath, which is a triple entity and is even more divided through the alphabet and the letters, always tells us, yo, wait for a full moon or wait for this God or wait for this goddess or wait for this material. No, instantly now it's yours. Tap into the jinn space outside of time and space and corporeal existence. This is not a question of belief. This is a question of applied spiritual sciences, applied spiritual technologies. This is what you have to do for yourself. Get your perception, get your awareness, and get yourself Esteem out of your breath, 
out of the rhythm of your breath, out of the survival mechanisms of your breath. Because the only thing that wants to survive is your breath. When you die, when you pass, you good. You, you know what I'm saying? You're going where you're going. Ultimately, whatever they wanted to call your ego was your breath. Whatever they wanted to call the monkey mind is your breath and nothing else but your breath. So to master the jinn state, which is being outside of time and space and wielding your mind, the all is mind, the universe is mental. To wield your mind outside of the constraints, outside of the limitations of time and space is the jinn state. And to do that, you must master your breath. That's why in most yoga classes or introductory meditation lessons, they always tell you, look at your breath. But for most people, when they're stressed, what's the first thing that happens when you're stressed? They tell you, calm down and focus on your breath. It was never you that was stressed. It was the breath. So what you call your mind is nothing but your adaptation and your relationship with your breath and now the breath is leading you but you must become Hermes the thrice great because you mastered the past the present and the future and you united all those three into a single point which we call the black dot into the eternal now the bird's eye view where all pasts all presents, all futures are occurring simultaneously. The only thing that goes through time is your breath. You can disconnect your identity and your... Con I have to repeat it. You can disconnect your identity and your consciousness from the breath who is here and living in the house we call the body. That's why also some guys call themselves alpha males. And I have to laugh at that shit. If you're not standing in the picture like the initiate that Hermes the thrice great represents. With the pyramid around your sacral area. With the fire coming up. With the caduceus in your hand. With the... Divine intuition represented by the dog and the emerald tablet. You're not a fucking alpha male. You are a better male. But what is the better male? The better males. Bet and bet. Bet is or bait in Arabic and bet in Hebrew is the house. What is the house? It's the body. What encapsulates the breath? Or oh, you have it. The body. So the house nigga is a person who is controlled by his breath. But the mystic or the true magician or the true alchemist is one who has disconnected his consciousness from the breath. Therefore, he is a master of Aleph because he is a master of Shin because he knows I do not breathe. Breathing happens in the bait. Therefore, I am not a slave to the five-pointed star. You get it? So, if you're not a master of the fire language, which is the 22 letters of the Hebrew alphabet, if you're not a master of the five-pointed star, if you are not the quote-unquote Baphomet, if you are not Hermes, the thrice great, you are not a fucking alpha male, my nigga. You're, you're not even close because the breath is your master. You haven't stepped on the dragon. huh? You haven't stepped on the dragon and civilized the dragon and transformed the dragon alchemically through process after process after process of refinement. And the other point I want to make also is do not take contracts of limitations. Don't limit yourself. Yes, it's cool. Uh, I'm doing shadow work and blah, 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 and all of those things. But remember, 
the only thing that will the current okay the fourth dimensional cube is called the tesseract in the middle of the tesseract you have a cube but this cube is not real it is an invisible cube it's like the space so the house is not real what is real is the four walls so the space in the house created by the four walls is what creates the appearance of the cube similarly the cube in the middle of the tesseract is what we call karma but karma is not real but it is real because karma is your words it's what you speak onto yourself so this life that's what i was telling you you don't need physical objects to represent or to dictate the level of emotions that you have so this life is like a blank state experiment it's like you know what here's here's a check you write whatever number you want on it you go into this vault and you get this money what most people do because of the slavery of the breath they go into the vault there's a hundred million dollars, but something tells them, man, fuck, I'm not worthy, or man, this is too much money, or man, this, and slowly but surely, they, they went into the vault, oh, I'm going to take a hundred million dollars, and then they end up leaving with a thousand dollars. Why? Because they are a slave to the breath and to their eyes, meaning that they think that their circumstance dictates what they are. Not knowing that the only thing that is going through circumstances is your breath. So when you partake in those limitations and you speak limitation onto yourself, you are creating your karma. But the cube of karma is not a cube that is made from material. It is a cube made from your words. So after you pass... Let's say after you pass away and you're walking in the astral world and something stops you and say, hey, yo, buddy, you got to go here. Like, what? Well, based on what you said about yourself, based on what you believed about yourself, you wrote here that you can only do this if there is this God here. So you spoke a limitation onto yourself because you first spoke the limitation through the way that you breathe. Look at the breath as a spectrum. 100% relaxed all the way to not relaxed. The true God, the true alchemist, his breath is going to be so relaxed that the breath, when you reach a certain threshold, the, even the breath becomes something different. You transform the breath because... What are you doing essentially is you're wielding the five pointed stars. But what is the fastest way to communicate with your body? It's not your mind or your thoughts or even your emotions. It's your breath. Your breath, the oxygen, tells your cells how you feel. So if you're in a stressed situation and you're breathing fast, you're indicating to your body that you're stressed. But when you've mastered your breath to such extent that whatever you communicate to yourselves is the utmost relaxation, that's when you are into samadhi and that's when you are above and beyond all forms of karmic debt. So do not speak limitations onto yourself. Everything that is good, that is beautiful, you work at Burger King, you have to feel like you own the entire planet. Your girl is not that beautiful. You have to feel like you're walking around with a 40 on 10. Your pockets are not that straight. Uh, you, you can't run fast. You have to feel like you are flash. Because what you're doing is you're telling and you're indicating to the breath, Hey, I'm in control. You don't dictate where I go. In the same way, why do you think that most people end up in random dreams? What transports you to, the, to those dreams? 
What hijacks your consciousness? It's your breath. Your breath takes you to those scenes based on the emotions that you felt on the states of being. So the more you practice relaxation, the more you practice high emotions, your breath can't move without you telling it to move. You're the master of time and space. You have to learn how to fly your dragon. Your dragon is not dragging you all over. You are the master of the dragon. So do not speak limitation onto yourself. Whatever your eyes are telling you, whatever your circumstance are telling you, only feed yourself from the highest sources because that is the game. That's why life is fair. We want to say that life is unfair. No, life is fair because everyone has the choice. And do you know do you know how I know everybody has the choice? Because you can have a child in any situation. Give him a toy and he'll take his mind anywhere and everywhere. And he'll feel good and he'll feel happy. And he could imagine himself anywhere doing anything. And he's no longer constrained by the limitations of what he sees. He is a master of his imagination. So ultimately, the way you graduate from this place is by having your childlike imagination intact and not letting the circumstances of your life and your breath dictate how you esteem yourself, how you esteem your life and ironically when you get on that frequency everything that you think you want everything that you think you need will all come rushing to you Imam Ali had a saying he said when you run after the world it runs away from you like your shadow but when you turn your back to the world it follows you like your shadow. So the way you turn your back to the world is you have to say you are perfect now. You don't need anything now. You have everything you want now. And feed yourself from the most pristine fountains of the highest feelings, of the highest states, of the high emotions, of the true Feelings that the gods are embodiments of. And you'll see how your life and your circumstances will transform without you even making an effort. But first, master your breath, master your sexual energy, master your Im imagination, and feed yourself of the most pristine emotions day in and day out and forget what your circumstances tell you. So when you go into that vault and you... They're, they're telling you how much money you want to take out that vault. You say everything. Give me the $100 million. There's no limitation. Why would I put a limitation on myself? So this is the irony about spirituality. We're always told to put down our egos. But at the same time, you have to have what you want to call an disproportionate self-esteem. Why? Because you don't know the limits of yourself. The axiom says, man, know thyself. But if there's no, there, if there's no proper limit to what I am, I'm never going to accept anything that puts a limit on myself, no matter what my circumstance dictate to me. And that's the trick and that's the test of life. Making it out of this bitch, making it out of this hell, Making it out of the circumstantial hell with your dignity as a God intact. Because nothing ever happened to you. It only happened to your breath. And you are the master of your breath as Tahuti, as Papa Legba, as Hermes the Thrice Great. Hermes the Thrice Great is the the level the initiate reaches before he becomes Tahuti, before he becomes a Papa Legba. So all those God titles and everything, those are titles that are earned through the alchemical 
processes that you go through, all right? So that was the video for today. Comment, share, like, and subscribe. And please, Califia Studios, go support Monica. She has amazing products. She has great products. She's a very sincere individual, and she's mighty talented. So comment, share, like, and subscribe. And if you want a consultation, just hit me up at Skeptical Spiritualist at... Uh, no, uh, at 02beyond at hotmail at gmail.com. It will be in the description box below. Peace, peace.